Hi everybody, in the shop today we've got a BMW E81. Very common fault we're going to be tackling today. It's the FRM module, FRM3 to be precise. Common fault, um, they often get this. One of the things is the electric windows don't work. Um, they should drop, I believe, when the door is opened and these ones aren't. I think that's an FRM problem. The other things that we're going to find that we've got, if we close the door, and we find the window switch, we will see no electric window. Um, as you can see, the lights are stuck on, if you saw that when I was getting in the car. We try and turn the lights on and off, we get on, off, on, off, no difference. Um, and the common thing is indicators. So if I put the indicator on, nothing. Quite common on these and the minis, all the E80 series BMWs and uh, I can't think of the mini R57s, I can't remember, but the uh, very, very common FRM problems, FRM3s, always having the data go corrupt. Quite often it's with a flat battery or a jump start or something like that. Or if you've tried to code it with Kali or something like that, cheap Chinese tools to try and code the car, you will get this problem. So the car will start and run. Um, no indicators, um, no interior light. If I open the door, you'll see we have no interior light. So no interior light, no windows, no indicators, lots of other things you'll find. And uh, let's see what fault codes we get. So we've just done a scan. So we're gonna be having a look today on the Think Tool Max. Now we've just uh, scanned it. Um, engine fault code is not actually relevant to this noise level sensor, so um, that's something that the customer's got, which he's not worried about. Um, in the instrument cluster, we have a couple of faults there. Um, message error, receiver instrument panel, transmitter, footwell module. FRM is the footwell module. Uh, message error, footwell module, um, blah, blah, blah. So we won't need to go into there. But as you can see here, the FRM module is not there. And no communication. You can try and communicate with it, but it won't find it. So uh, what we're gonna do is fix it, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, you'll notice as well that this door window definitely doesn't drop. Um, pretty nasty to leave it and try and use it like that. So you wanna get your FRM fixed as quick as you can so you won't get this problem. So let's see if we can find the FRM. So the FRM is located driver side if you're in the UK I guess on left-hand drive vehicles are still on this side but um, get some light on the subject it's mounted behind here so this panel has to come off here and then we'll get access to the FRM first thing we're gonna to have to take off is this strip here to be able to take off the a pillar trim to get the sill trim off you need a, a tool similar to this or a screwdriver and you have to forget it, focus. You're right, if you get this and then pop it up, you might see some of the clips will break, some will come off, but you can fix those up later. You can pop them back in. Um, can't do it one-handed, so I'm gonna have to lay the phone down and then finish off in a second. Next thing to take off is what I call the shin panel, which is here which is held on by a torque screws this time. Um, there was a three of those all the way along and one just on the end there. We should be able to drop that down. Okay, that's the last T20 screw out. Um, the one there is actually a, a push clip. You just get a screwdriver or fork underneath it and pull it off. Now, let's see if we can take that down and get access to the FRM a bit better. Right, so carefully, you have to pull this down, get it clear, slide it up out of the way. One connector for the footwell light. Once that's taken off, you have two hands up. Next job is to take off the bonnet release catch. I've just loosened this one. That's held on with a Phillips screw. Just one little Phillips on the end there. We take that off. And then we're left with the A-pillar trim. Let's show you how to get that off. Again, that's held on with just a Phillips screw just beneath it. 
um, there. You've got to take a Phillips screw out of that. Again, Phillips screwdriver. That screw is off. Then we've got to take this panel off here. We should now be able to take out a pillar um, cover. That's the little cover there to come off. And behind there, you will see it's a better picture now. This here, this box here, that is the FRM3 module. It's held in with um, a 10 millimeter plastic nut there. And at the top, it's held in with a plastic 10 millimeter nut as well. So let's get those nuts off and see if we get it off. Once you've got the two 10 millimeter nuts off at the bottom and the top, it's just a case of wriggling it down, plenty of cable, and then undoing the multi plugs. There's a little release lever there, which uh, you can just press down with your thumbnail and then the lever. Don't break the levers, just go gentle on it. If they're not releasing, it's because you haven't got the release tab, the locking tab unplugged. Three multi plugs off, and there is your FRM3 module. You can see it's an FRM3 because it'll say here FRM3R. Loads of different models about, but as long as it's an FRM numerical 3, not the FRM III or FRM2, then it's data corruption, and uh, we can do that for you tools you're going to need to get it off remember is a phillips screwdriver um, a 10 mil socket or um, something trying to do a 10 mil with i used one long and one short um, a fork tool or a long blunt screwdriver to remove some trims with and uh, a t20 torque screwdriver and uh, that's all there is to getting one off to get your FRM3 module repaired, simply log on to ecuconnection.co.uk where you can find a vast selection of programming services for most makes and models of vehicles. We also stock thousands of ECUs and control modules on our ECU shop ready for immediate Europe-wide delivery. Simply click on the ECU shop tab at the top of the page to purchase a component or click on the services tab to search for a service. Then enter your vehicle details into the filters on the left hand side. Alternatively, you can try our quick search box at the top of the page if you know the part number or the service that you need. For example, today we are looking for a BMW FRM3 module. When you view the results, you will see that we offer either an exchange unit or a programming service. Click on the programming service. Here you can read in detail the services that we offer. We offer either a cloning service or a data recovery service. Select from the drop down menu the data recovery service and add to basket to place your order. Then proceed to the checkout and pay on our secure payment system. All that is left to do then is to send us your faulty unit which will be repaired and sent back to you within a few days working perfectly. Sign for the science bit again, it's all corrected. So first thing we need to do is to um, read the data so we're going to read the file and we're going to check if it's corrupted to begin with and this tells us that it's corrupted so we're going to read the file once the file is read the next thing to do is save the file as always so once we've saved the file we're then going to use our software to correct the software which is uh, got corrupted in the uh, processor because it's a corruption problem. And once we've done that, what we have to do is adjust the, the chip corruption which erases the, the chip, but don't worry because we've got all the data saved. So we're going to write it back in a second. And once we've got the partition corrected and write it back, and next thing to do is open up our corrected file and then write it back to the FRM. It 
takes just a second to write it. We're going to verify our repair and our files are correct. Then we've got to just disconnect it from the programming tool. We'll uh, box it up, send it back to your recorder delivery, all ready for refitting. So when the FRM comes back to you, it'll be ready for fitting straight back onto the car. Plug and play, you don't have to do any other work. Um, refitting is reversal of removal. Now I'm not going to bore you with putting it back together because if you manage to take it off yourself, you'll be able to put it back on yourself. But uh, let's come back and see if it's fixed it in two seconds. Last bit of trim to go on. Now uh, these are the little clips that may stay in the sill when you pop them out, but don't worry, they don't usually break. If they do, you can live without a couple of them. If they do uh, stay in the sill, you need to get them out with a trim removal fork tool that goes in and you pop them out of the sill and they just slide into the sill trim. And then the last bit of trim to go on is the sill trim. Let's pop this back on here. Which is uh, definitely easier without holding a camera. Uh, there it is, goes in a lot easier when you've got two hands. They just uh, snap down, push fit. Boom, she's on. Right, let's see if we have a success. So, first thing, we're going to get the key out of the ignition slot. And we're going to check the doors. Straight away, you can see, now when I open the door, the window goes up, as it should do. Let's hopefully find the passenger side is now sorted. Yeah, there we go. Much better. I don't think he's done too much damage by running it how he was. A little bit heavy-handed. You, uh, you don't want to be forcing them doors too much, but I don't think he's done any major damage. So let's see what else is working, see if we've got a success. Straight away, good news, we have an interior light. Shut the door. Got the key in the slot. Get the ignition on. And let's try the electric windows. Are we ready? Whoa, we got a one touch working and everything. That's all good. Lights time. So lights on, lights off. Lights on, lights off. What about the indicators? Let's see if the indicators is going. Oh, look at that. Full house, bingo. Um, last thing you do is just check and clear all the fault codes. Let's give that a go. Scans all completed. Um, let's see if we can clear these fault codes now. So we're gonna go um, into the instrument cluster. Clear the fault codes. Fault codes have cleared this time. Go back. Instrument cluster is now clear. ECM, well, that's again not an FRM fault, it's oil level sensor, but we're going to have interest, see if it clears. No, that's got a faulty oil level sensor. Nothing to do with us, that's not what it's in for. But now, look, we have a uh, FRM is now in red. That means it's communicating, but there's faults. So let's clear the fault out of those. And hopefully we'll have a full set of uh, ECUs with no fault codes. Uh, we're just gonna clear them out rather than bother reading them because we know it's had a faulty FRM. Let's see if that clears. Yep, there we go. All clear apart from ECM, no problem, another job done. So if you have a problem with your FRM3 on any E-Series BMW or on a Mini and you want to get it repaired, that's how to take them off. On the Mini, they're on the passenger side footwell, I believe. On most BMWs that I know of, they're on the driver side footwell. Um, faults normally include electric windows not working, lights stuck on on the outside of the vehicle, not able to switch them off, sometimes not working at all. Um, interior light not working is a common one. We have had them and the only fault visible on the car 
was a rear fog light which didn't work and that was an FRM so it's always worth getting your FRM checked out we can soon tell you if the date is corrupt or if it's a dead unit um, they don't really suffer from water damage too much sometimes they have if it is water damage we can clone it for another one um, that's all I got to say have a great evening guys and girls bye bye